This gun went off. Rick's position in the community was firmly established. Then, a long-lost voice was heard it was none other than Morgan. Never did they expect to meet again under these circumstances. The next day, Rick and his old friend finally had a chance to chat and catch up. Rick was pleased to see that Morgan had managed to overcome his inner demons. However, Rick couldn't help but be curious about Morgan's impressive staff fighting skills. But Morgan clearly didn't want to discuss the painful past. Soon after, Rick took Morgan on a tour of the community and extended an invitation for him to stay. In the afternoon, Tobin and Gabriel were digging graves, preparing to bury Reg and Pete, but Rick stopped them, believing that someone like Pete didn't deserve to be buried within the community. Even Deanna stepped forward to support Rick's decision. This scene was witnessed by Pete's son, planting the seeds of resentment in his heart as he saw his father being discarded outside. Soon enough, Rick and Morgan, carrying the bodies, headed towards a distant location in a wooded area. Rick originally intended to simply leave the bodies there, but Morgan, having learned the ways of peace, insisted on giving the deceased a dignified burial. Without paying attention to Rick, Morgan began digging. At this point, Rick sensed that something was off and started calling out Morgan's name. Morgan, thinking that Rick wanted to stop him, didn't respond. There seemed to be some noise in the distance, so the two hurriedly followed the sound. They arrived at the edge of a cliff and, upon getting closer, felt their scalps tingling. In the pit below, they discovered it was filled with zombies a truly horrifying sight. At this moment, there was also a commotion behind them. Ron was running fast, with several zombies chasing after him. The child had no experience dealing with zombies and stumbled along the way. Luckily, Rick intervened in time to stop him. Otherwise, the consequences would have been unimaginable. The zombies chasing Ron also fell into the deep pit. The remaining two zombies were no match for them. As they stood up, they looked at Ron, puzzled as to how he ended up there. He explained that he just wanted to see where his father was being buried. Morgan's breathing was heavy as he took out his binoculars to observe. The zombies were densely packed, and there must have been tens of thousands of them down there, continuously pouring in. The exit of the gorge was blocked by two large trucks. Rick finally understood why the community had been so fortunate. Since the apocalypse, although there were zombies around the walls, they never encountered a small-scale zombie horde. It seemed that most of the zombies had fallen into this pit. Morgan looked up at the exit again. Zombies were constantly walking towards the blocked trucks. It was uncertain one would fall down, and the two trucks below would have scattered zombies coming out. This hidden danger needed to be resolved quickly. After returning to the community, everyone immediately gathered for a meeting. The speaker was Heath who frequently went out to search for supplies. They hadn't been in the community for the past few weeks. He mentioned that they had discovered this zombie pit earlier, but it wasn't as massive back then, so they didn't inform Deanna about it. The reason why the community was safe was that the zombie horde fell into the pit, and the noise attracted even more zombies. Rick stepped forward and said that the truck falling down was only a matter of time. Perhaps a heavy rain would cause a collapse. The direction of the exit was towards the east. And when that happened, all the zombies would rush towards the community. No matter how strong the walls were, they couldn't withstand tens of thousands of zombies. So rather than wait until then it's better to take the initiative. This man's name was Carter. He and Reg were both architects and were dissatisfied with Rick's leadership. Carter believed that they should focus on fortifying the weak areas instead of taking unnecessary risks. Unexpectedly, Deanna spoke up and supported following Rick's plan. She had come to realize that the community needed reform. With her authorization, Rick began assigning tasks. It was clear that they couldn't eliminate all the zombies, so they had to lure them away from the community to a distant location. This dangerous task was initially assigned to Daryl, but for safety reasons, Sasha and Abraham volunteered to go. The rest of them have to do support work. They implemented a voluntary sign-up system for the mission because of its high risk. Michonne quickly and actively volunteered to participate. As did Glenn. Surprisingly, Gabriel also requested to join, but Rick mercilessly refused him, knowing well the reasons behind his request. Carter chimed in again, opposing their plan and stating, you guys are just theorizing on paper, what will you do if we can't control the zombies when the time comes? Just because you went through that incident, does it mean everyone should listen to you? Rick looked at him with a speechless expression, contemplating the audacity of this troublemaker. He replied, I am saving your lives. Carter became more and more enthusiastic in his objections, mentioning Rick's atrocities within the community. Deanna had to step in and stop him, silencing him. Soon, Heath and other members of the community also actively joined. 
as they frequently went outside and understood the severity of the situation, Nicholas also raised his hand to participate, as he had completely regretted his actions regarding Glenn and hoped to make amends. Seeing everyone's enthusiasm, Rick summarized the meeting, and urgent preparations followed. Rick took a map and began planning to lead the zombies onto the road and keep moving, however, this can be troublesome when zombies are passing through the community. Finally, Eugene suggested using large metal plates from the construction site and securing them to reduce the impact. All eyes were on Carter at that moment. It was his professional expertise that was needed. They acted immediately. One side of the three-way road led back to the community. Everyone enthusiastically began the construction work. After three hours, a portion of the steel plates had been securely fixed. As long as they were sturdy enough, they could withstand the impact. At that moment, Rick noticed the presence of a zombie and quickly alerted Carter, who turned around to check. Michonne and others hurried over with weapons to provide support. But Rick stopped them. He wanted the people within the community to start training and learn to kill zombies themselves. Watching the clumsy movements of these people, they could be eaten by the zombies at any moment. Morgan couldn't bear to watch anymore. Rick had no other choice but to lead his group and charge forward. The zombies that troubled others were swiftly dispatched by Rick's group in less than a minute. The people present finally realized the cruelty of the post-apocalyptic world. Morgan strongly disagreed with Rick's actions, unable to comprehend how he had become so ruthless. Rick had no intention of debating with him, but Carter became even more resentful toward Rick because of this incident. Upon returning to the community, Eugene was in the storage room holding food when he faintly heard voices. It was Carter speaking. He claimed that Rick's plan was nothing short of suicide and that Rick was a murderer. Pete had been killed by Rick and soon they would all be wiped out by him. Deanna is now completely irrational too. They must kill Rick before the next day's maneuver to regain control of the community. Eugene listened in shock, accidentally dropping a can of food to the floor. The noise immediately caught their attention, and in his panic, he even bumped into the shelves. Carter walked in, having overheard their conversation, and saw Eugene as a living time bomb. Without hesitation, he aimed his gun, intending to eliminate Eugene. Fortunately, at that moment, Rick and the others walked in and witnessed the scene. Carter trembled and said, I'm going to take back control from you. Rick ignored him and turned to Tobin and the others, asking, is this what you all think too? But they all stated that it was only Carter's opinion. Then Rick pretended not to care and spoke casually, seizing the opportunity to take Carter's handgun. Carter's skills were really lacking, and Rick easily subdued him with a couple of moves. Without hesitation, Rick made it clear to him, the community is now in my hands, I'm protecting your lives. It's delusional to think you can take away power. Carter's overall abilities were far inferior to those of Rick and his group. He thought he was as good as dead. Daryl spoke up and called out to Rick it meant to spare his life. Rick had no intention of killing him. He has principles when it comes to killing people. In Rick's eyes, Carter posed no threat. He wasn't a bloodthirsty killer. The next day, everything was ready. Rick led the crowd to the previously studied route. They could practice once today to avoid confusion later on. On their way, they passed by a small store. It was a necessary route. There are zombies inside making noise by tapping on the glass. It's bad if attracted to the zombies as they pass by. Rick decided that they would clear it out on their way back. Soon after, they arrived at their destination. Tomorrow's operation would start from there. They couldn't afford any mistakes. Rick addressed everyone, saying, I know this is crazy, but we're living in a crazy world. After speaking, he began assigning tasks for the next day. In essence, Tobin would open the exit and start attracting the zombies. Once they were led to a certain location, Daryl and his group would take over, but at that moment, they heard a noise coming from the valley. Everyone immediately panicked. Unfortunately, the place where the truck was parked collapsed. Everyone anxiously watched, praying it wouldn't fall down. Today was just a practice, and they weren't prepared, but things didn't go as planned. The truck rolled down. Rick shouted, the gap is open, let's start the action now. Everyone quickly took their positions. At this point, many people on the field were a bit confused. Didn't they say it was a drill? But under Rick's command, they had no choice but to take their places. Glenn called two people to join him. They were going to deal with the zombies in the store they passed by earlier. Otherwise, it would cause major problems. Several signal flares were immediately launched into the air. They needed to lure these zombies to other areas. Otherwise, their home would be destroyed. Under Rick's command, Tobin also drove away the vehicles blocking the path below. The exit of the canyon was now fully open. Zombies stumbled out from both exits. Everyone retreated along the planned route. 
The next stage was to attract the zombies. Glenn and the others retreated along the planned route. They had to launch a signal flare every time they ran a certain distance to ensure the zombies followed that path. Meanwhile, Rick and the other two ran quickly, they needed to reach the three-way intersection to ensure the zombies couldn't break through the obstacles. After 10 minutes, Daryl rode his motorcycle slowly. The sound of zombies could be heard behind him. Rick and the others ran frantically all the way and finally arrived at the three-way intersection. They were uncertain if these steel plates could hold back the zombie onslaught. They had no guarantee. If they couldn't stop them, the zombies would trample their home. So far, the plan was progressing smoothly. Daryl successfully led the zombies onto the road. As long as nothing went wrong, they would bring the zombies to a location 20 miles away from the community. That would be a great success. Sasha and Abraham were also driving to meet up with him. The three of them would complete this dangerous task. Meanwhile, Glenn arrived at the store. The zombies inside were still banging on the glass. They had to eliminate them before the herd arrived. Glenn had the most experience, so he immediately directed them to take action. He assigned Nicholas to open the door and release one or two zombies at a time in a continuous cycle, ensuring their safe elimination. Heath had some doubts about Glenn's arrangement, but Nicholas spoke up for Glenn, allowing Heath to trust him unconditionally. Just as the three of them were about to take action, Nicholas opened the door, revealing another rolling shutter gate behind it. By this time, the horde of zombies had reached the intersection. Rick and the others quickly fired the signal guns, drawing the zombies towards the east. Daryl and Sasha led the zombies, moving slowly. Now they could only hope that the steel plates could withstand the impact of some of the zombies. Soon, Daryl and the others began to turn, and fortunately, the zombies followed suit. However, some zombies still collided with the steel plates, making a terrifying noise. Tens of thousands of zombies passed by them. Finally, they successfully passed the intersection according to the plan. As long as they could lead the zombies 20 miles away, they would be safe. The zombie horde would soon reach the location of the store. Glenn's trio couldn't care less about their safety. There were probably more than 10 zombies inside. They had to take the risk and break the glass to release them all at once. With handguns in their hands, they calmly shot without wasting bullets. When their ammunition ran out, a few more zombies managed to escape. They had to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Nicholas, who used to be cowardly and self-serving, actively rushed out to kill the zombies. This completely changed Glenn's opinion of him. Nicholas had truly turned over a new leaf. After finishing their task, they quickly left and prepared to rendezvous with Rick and the others. The next task was to ensure that the zombie horde wouldn't deviate. Abraham spotted any zombies straying. He immediately jumped off the car without paying attention to Sasha's persuasion. He was truly a madman. However, he was highly efficient and quickly brought back the deviating zombies to the road. Rick and the others also caught up from the woods, observing the zombie horde from the sidelines. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. The plan had almost succeeded. Carter took the initiative to apologize to Rick, acknowledging his leadership skills. Rick warned everyone not to let their guard down. They still had to escort the zombie horde all the way and he ordered Glenn to cover the rear. Everyone understood the severity of the situation and followed the orders carefully. Unfortunately, Carter, the unlucky guy, was caught by a zombie from behind while running. Lacking experience, he was bitten directly on the face. His screams echoed through the sky. Some of the zombies on the path began to move towards the woods, causing more to stray off course. Rick also heard the screams and immediately contacted Tobin to fire, redirecting the zombies back, and he finally arrives to the rescue. Carter was truly foolish to let himself get bitten for so long. Rick killed the zombie with a single slash, then checked Carter's condition. He was now completely engulfed in panic, continuously screaming. Rick called out to him several times, but Carter couldn't calm down. Rick had no choice but to take inhumane measures to silence his screams. The gunshots quickly brought the zombies back on track. Rick didn't have any issues with what he did, except that it seemed inhumane, especially considering the way Morgan looked at him, as if saying, how could you become like this? Morgan wanted to lecture Rick, but he was outright rejected. Rick only needed Morgan's help. The zombie horde was now approximately two miles away from the community, and it could be considered a near victory in this battle. But just then, a loud horn blast came. Everyone turned their heads towards the direction of the community. Something was wrong. Could there be trouble within the community? The latter half of the zombies on the road started moving towards the woods. 
heading straight to the location of the community. How could there be such a deviation when it was so close to success? In this situation, the second half of the zombies walked towards the source of the sound. The community was now in imminent danger, and everyone wondered what had happened. Just half an hour ago, the community was going about its usual peaceful life. Carol was still discussing everyday matters with the women, while Deanna and her assistant Maggie were planning the community's development. Eugene and Tara were assisting in the medical room, where they had met the new doctor, Denise. However, she had only been an intern before the apocalypse. After a while, Carol returned home to bake cookies when she noticed her neighbor smoking across the street. It seemed their lives weren't going well either. Suddenly, a stranger rushed in and attacked the neighbor, brutally killing she. Carol sensed that something was terribly wrong. Deanna and Maggie also heard screams from within the community. They were about to ask the patrolling man what had happened when two Molotov cocktails were thrown. The man fell down with a scream. Maggie quickly grabbed her gun and rushed to investigate. Everything was too bizarre. The man on the ground had already lost his life, and the person who set the fire had quickly escaped. Carol immediately went to Rick's house and instructed Carl to protect his sister at home while she went out to support. Fortunately, thanks to Rick, their team still had guns. Many intruders had stormed into the community. Looking like savages, armed with cold weapons, they killed anyone they encountered without a trace of mercy. Carol quietly hid in the bushes, looking for an opportunity, and witnessed their brutal actions. These people had a letter W marked on their foreheads. She ran through the woods and arrived at the back of a house. Knowing exactly what she had to do, she could only seize the opportunity to kill the isolated ones. Watching their actions, it was evident that they had done this before. When Carol reached the corner of the house, she heard a woman begging for mercy. One of the thugs was about to kill the woman, to avoid alerting others. Carol chose to sneak up and attack with a knife. Who would have thought that this fragile woman would be like a true wolf? Carol quickly approached to check on the woman's condition. The pain made her whimper, and Carol had to cover her mouth signaling her not to make a sound. Eventually, Carol realized that the woman wouldn't survive. So she ended her suffering. Carol was grieving because this was a person with whom she had often discussed family life. Among those who discovered these attackers was Deanna's eldest son, Spencer, who was stationed in the lookout tower and had a clear view of the targets. However, his marksmanship was not impressive. Rick's team also began to take action. At this moment, the sound of a truck could be heard. Someone was trying to ram through the fence with the truck. Without hesitation, Spencer fired his gun, and a series of shots indicated that the driver was likely killed instantly. The truck crashed into the tower where Spencer was positioned, but fortunately, the fence held up. However, the truck's horn kept blaring, 